Some flowers are known for their medicinal benefits to humans. However, can some flowers help honeybees to fight infections and diseases? Hi, I'm Dr. Umberto Balcristiani, and this video is brought to you by Vita Bee Health. In my last video, I showed some exciting experiments indicating that sunflowers might be secretly helping honeybees against their number one enemy, the varroa mite. And in today's video, I want to show you how honeybee researchers tested the therapeutic effect of sunflowers against a parasite in bumblebees and a deadly fungal disease in honeybees. And the results, spoiler alert, might make you confused. Pollinators are critically important for preserving plant biodiversity and provide billions of dollars in crop pollination annually. Bees are important pollinators globally, and there have been mounting concerns about increased mortality in both honeybees and native bees, and pathogens have been strongly implicated in the decline of many bee species. Proper nutrition might be key to help. Just like humans, a good diet can make a lot of difference in our overall health. If some nutritional component is missing, the whole system is start to collapse. Pollen is bee's sole source of lipids and protein and varies widely in nutrition content, morphology, and chemistry. Pollen nutritional quality is important for individual bee size and other metrics of colony performance. Pollen quality also affects the expression of genes related to hosting immune functions, and pollen starvation increases the likelihood of bees dying when infected with a common gut pathogen. Therefore, it is clear that variation in pollen composition might have critical effects on bee performance and interaction with pathogens, opening a huge avenue for new and interesting honeybee research. In 2018, researchers conducting a series of laboratory experiments in a field survey to investigate the effect of pollen diet on bee diseases and health using the common eastern bumblebee, bumbles in patients, and the European honeybee, Apis mellifera. Bumblebees infected with Critidia, a protozoan gut pathogen, were provided with monofloral pollen from three important monocultures, rape, sunflowers, and buckwheat, as well as a mixed diet composed of the three monofloral pollen and sunflower significantly reduced Critidian infection in bumblebees compared with all other pollen diets. The infections levels were 20 to 50 fold lower in bees fed sunflower pollen than in either rape or buckwheat pollen. Here's an interesting observation. After one week of treatment, two thirds of the sunflower fed bees have no detectable infection anymore. That's quite interesting. In a separate experiment, the researchers allowed infection level up a little bit more for one week before providing the pollen treatment. In that case, they found five to eight fold reduction in infection within bees fed sunflower pollen compared to the white flower pollen mixture or buckwheat pollen. And the medicinal effect of sunflower pollen were consistent across pathogen collected from two locations and with two different sources of sunflower pollen. So far, so good, right? But how about the honeybees Apis mellifera. When the researchers infected honeybees with Nosema serrani, another dangerous gut pathogen, and fed them with sunflower pollen, buckwheat pollen, or no pollen at all, they also found reduced infection of honeybees fed with sunflower pollen compared with buckwheat pollen. The authors showed that the infection in sunflower-fed honeybees was significantly lower after 10 days when compared with buckwheat feed bees. And the significant difference was still for a while, 15 days after the start of the experiment. It definitely looks interesting, but I'm not impressed by this result. And to explain why, I need to give you a brief overview of Nosema's life cycle, and then we can discuss. Nosema is a specialized spore-forming fungus that honeybees acquire by ingesting contaminated food. The spores protect the fungus cells in a dormant way until they find the correct environment to release the fungus cells. Once in the midgut, the spores are activated and they literally inject the fungus cells from inside the spores inside the bee's midgut epithelial cells. If the spores release the fungus cells outside the host cells, the fungus will die. Once they complete the replication cycle, new spores are released from the damaged honeybee midgut epithelial cells. Nosema serrani specialized in infecting the epithelial midgut cells because this fungus depends on cells 
with high replication rates and good nutrition. They don't have all the components for their own replication, so they need to hijack nutrition and components from cells in constant replication so they can replicate themselves. In my consulting business, I see this frequently. The big nosema problems occurs mostly in beekeeping operations that specialized in constantly growing bees. In these operations, the beekeepers feed bees with the best nutrition source possible to grow bees as fast as possible, non-stop. This is the perfect scenario for nosema. Epithelial cells replicating themselves and working really hard to absorb tons of good food. In nature, however, food resources constantly fluctuate and do not provide the perfect replication conditions for nosema. In these windows, the honeybees normally clean up the infection. So when you see a graph like this, showing less nosema infection on some flower-fed bees, you should ask yourself, is nosema not replicating because there is something special about sunflower pollen? intervening in the replication cycle or is there something missing in the nutrition composition of sunflower pollen causing the infection reduction? Well, sunflower pollen is already known to be a bad nutrition source for honeybees. The bees don't fully develop when you feed bees exclusively with sunflower pollen and the authors know that. When the authors look at the mortality rate, honeybees fed with sunflower pollen died at the same rate as bees not consuming pollen at all. Think about that for a second. That tells a lot. It clearly indicates that sunflower pollen is, at least from the nutritional point of view, not good for honeybees apes mellifera. So when I look at the data, I'm not impressed by the infection reduction in honeybees, the same way I was impressed by the data with bumblebees. In the bumblebees case, it's completely different. The data on honeybees, apes mellifera, tells me that the nutritional source is not ideal, period. I can't go further than that. That makes me go even further and wonder if that's not the case with varroa mites from my previous video. If you didn't see the video, the video is about a new research showing the potential role of sunflower pollen in inhibiting varroa mite replication. And I got a lot of people excited about it. Varroa mite also specialize and completely depend on honeybees brood for replication. Therefore, any alteration in that environment could change the replication behavior of varroa mites. Does the reduction of varroa mite replication observed in that experiment have anything to do with the bad nutritional value of sunflower pollen. Perhaps the brood race under sunflower pollen feeding does not have everything to guarantee a successful replication of the mite. That's very interesting and I will follow this very closely. This whole sunflower research is a great example of how science works and how ideas that might look amazing one day from one angle, the next day might not look so good anymore. Please note that, that I'm not saying anything is right or wrong here. I'm thinking out loud and sharing my thoughts, looking at data from other researchers. Only the data and time will tell us the real truth in the future. Let's keep learning and testing. Please read the article and let me know your thoughts. I know scientific articles could be more fun to read, but it is important for the general public to start to know more about the scientific method. This is the only way to find success in beekeeping. Please let me know if you don't know a specific terminology or procedure. I will likely make a video about it and if you are a Patreon mine, I will respond directly. Link for the article in the description. Remember, the channel's goal is to learn together, just like in this video right here. Special thanks to my high tier Patreons for the support and I'll see you guys in the next video. Inside the Hive.tv, the show will be...